Hi everyone, Kelt here, bringing you my thoughts on the British royal family, and today I'll be talking about Harry's birthday and a few other things. He will be inheriting quite a chunk, and his inheritance from his great-grandmother will be available for him, though overseen by Princess Anne. However, it's not likely to last his wife very long. I wouldn't be surprised if there would be a new property bought within days of him receiving his money. It's also being said that this is the reason the divorce has taken so long. Meghan's always been aware of this money and has delayed leaving Harry or starting divorce proceedings because of this. Harry actually gets more than William, although seven million is not a huge amount for royalty nowadays. Although Princess Anne has a degree of control over this, it's being said that there are no plans for her to intervene. What with the talk recently about Meghan planning to confront King Charles, or being one step away from confronting him about his product promotion, what we've got now is Meghan allegedly having issued a seven-word demand to Prince William for him to relinquish the throne to Harry, can you believe? The message is this, and I quote, My husband is the next rightful king, end quote. And I would say that this is about as real as anything else that's going on in the headlines right now. If it were real, she could be done for treason. But there are many people that could be done for treason with all that's been going on lately. And Meghan's treatment of the Queen a few years ago, actually telling her to drop dead, I think would have got her a trip a one-way trip to the Tower of London if we were a few hundred years in the past. So while I think Meghan has only said that in her dreams, it's being used to add to the never-ending circus. Don't forget that she was overheard saying in front of witnesses that they, she and Harry, were one plane crash away from the throne. So while that was definitely said and witnessed, and you can guarantee she's probably said even worse, if she did actually send those words to Prince William, then it just affirms her unbalanced mental state. There has been more talk about the state of King Charles's health, and I've noticed that the code word for his funeral preparations, which is Menai Bridge, has been used quite a bit. I've seen it cropping up here and there. The Queen was London Bridge, her code name, and Prince Philip's was Operation Fourth Bridge. These code names are to be used to communicate the passing of a royal family member between the government, the police, the military, whoever's involved. There's been a lot of talk about Menai Bridge recently, and hopefully it's just a coincidence, but it's been closed for a while due to an accident. There was also a very small earthquake in that area a couple of days ago, which is not a usual occurrence. I'm not saying anything specifically, but I do remember that both with the Queen and Prince Philip, there were real-time incidents connected to their code bridge names. Now I'm reading that Meghan is planning to endorse Kamala Harris for president, or Kamala Harris, I don't know which way people pronounce it. Why bother? Anything there will be very short-lived and they will be two laughing stocks together. Royal reporter Kinsey Schofield believes that Meghan and Harry could prove influential in swaying voters ahead of Kamala's showdown with Donald Trump in November. I personally believe that it will be done and dusted before November, but hey, what do I know? Incredibly, a poll asked how many people would be influenced by a potential endorsement from Harry and Meghan, and 40% said they would be influenced. Yes, but influenced negatively or positively? And the reason why Meghan wants to do this is because she wants to be included, apparently, because it's potentially a very historic election. Funny how she always manages to somehow worm her way into the current topic of conversation. This article says that Meghan has a history of directly involving herself in political causes. In other words, Meghan has a history of pushing herself into situations she doesn't understand to feel included. In the meantime, she is said to be finding her declining popularity in the United States hard to swallow, while Harry is uninterested in negative opinion polls. 
It's taken her quite a while to actually spot this and to realise that she's not all she thought she was in the popularity stakes. She and Kamala Harris both have bad reputations regarding managing their staff. I've also been told that Harry is beefing up his security after the assassination attempt on Donald Trump, as he feels that he's an obvious target. I find that hard to believe that he's an obvious target. But anything to try and get more money from his father, don't you think? It seems to follow a pattern, obviously trying to get more before his birthday. But Harry's greatest fear is not a possible assassination attempt, or even Meghan. His greatest fear is Prince George, who is growing up to be a confident and handsome young man and is already making a good impression and proof that Harry has not been the spare for quite some time. I'm impressed that people are now referring to Harry as Mr Sussex as well. I must remember to do that. So let me have your thoughts. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.